Hello everyone, it's Benny, and today I'm going to be showing you some extremely compact redstone memory. And I know I don't usually show off my redstone creations, but I think this deserves to be an exception, because this is just ridiculously small, and there's a lot of really cool things about this redstone memory. So, let's just go and dive right into it, shall we? Okay, so first off, right here, I have four bytes of this memory. As you can see, it's already pretty small, but so I'm just going to quickly demonstrate it to you so I can prove to you that it is indeed redstone memory. So I'm just going to create some quick things. These are, this is of course, the input, and this is the write command. So that writes. I'm going to go over to this cell. I'm going to write something else. I'm going to go to the third set, write something else. I'm going to go to the last set, and I'll just write this. Okay. So now if I go down to my reading system, if I read the first one, I have written four ones and four zeros. That is correct. If I go to my second read, I have written zero one zero one, which is correct. The next I had written one zero one zero, which is correct. And the last I just wrote one, which is also correct. So there, there's a really quick demonstration showing it in action. It does work. So there you go. So, exactly how small is it? Well, one cell of this memory is 2 by 3 by 13. And I know that doesn't sound particularly small at first, but that's 78 blocks volumetrically. And if you compare that to, say, Peter C1's ultra-compact redstone memory that he used in his 4 kilobytes of redstone memory, which if you haven't seen, you should definitely look at, because that's pretty amazing, if you compare it to that, his memory cell was 80 blocks volumetrically, and this is 78, so it's smaller than that. And also his system required a controller mechanism that was that took up a fair bit of space, and this doesn't, so... You know, all around, this can be... it's potentially a much better system, so... But one disadvantage of the, compared to his system, just since I'm on the topic, is this is vertical and his is horizontal, so... yeah. Okay, so enough about that. In terms of size, another thing I should really bring up is it's tileable on all three axes. So you can tile it on X, Y, and Z axes and just go crazy, and it works just fine. And I could be completely wrong about this, but I believe this is the smallest memory cell ever created in Minecraft. And again, I could be completely wrong about this. I'll definitely need confirmation, but I think I've never seen any memory cell ever built in Minecraft that's smaller than this. So, there you go. And another interesting thing I should mention is that the delay for reading and the delay for writing are free ticks, each. But they do not compound one another. A lot of memory cells that you'll see will compound the reading and writing delay, which is just stupid. You should never, ever need to compound the reading and writing delay. So if I write something and I'm reading, then it would still take free ticks, because that's a delay of the writing command. If I read and I don't write, then that will always take free ticks. So no matter what I'm doing, every command will always take free ticks. The information will always take free ticks to get from the top bus to the bottom bus. And yeah. So, other than that, I really just want to show you just show you two memory cells stacked on top of each other to prove it's tileable on the z-axis. And yeah, that really should be everything I want, I'm want. i going to show you before I actually show you how to build it. So, one moment. And that's really all I want to say about it, other than, of course, building it and just proving that it is indeed 13 by 2 by 3 like I claim. So, the 2 should be easy enough to see, 1, 2. The 3 should also be easy enough to see, 1, 2, 3. The 13. This is a little bit weird, since these two blocks, as you can see, are also on the top row. We're not going to count these two bottom blocks. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And as you can see, these two blocks are on the thirteenth the row, and that's why we're not counting them there at the bottom. So, with that done, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to build it. So first off, I'm just going to place some redstone here. I'm going to build a basic block update detector, because that's the basis of this memory, actually. It's a block update detector. 
So, just to quickly show you, now there's a basic block up detector. If I hit this and then I send a pulse through it or an update, then the piston will extend. If I turn the power off, I need to send power through again and the piston will retract. That's a very basic block up detector. I'm sure you've seen them many times before and that's why I'm not really going to explain them very much. But if I just move the wires around, and this actually doesn't affect the functionality, it's just going to make it closer to how it's going to be finalized. But a different way of thinking of this block up detector system, the very basic block up detector, which you've seen many times before, is it's like a memory cell. So, or a D flip flop. So, you could say that this line is the data and this is a clock. So, if I have data 1 and clock it, then that extends the piston, or it sets it as 1. If I have data is 0 and I clock it, then that sets the piston retracted, or as a 0. So it's a different way of thinking it of it so that this could be potentially a memory cell. And as it turns out, that's exactly the whole reason this thing works. Because what I do is I put a repeater here, and I put a torch right here going into the repeater, and this right here will allow me to get a redstone signal out based on if the piston is extended or retracted. So I place just some redstone dust right there. If the piston is extended, then the dust has power. If the piston is retracted, the dust doesn't have power. Very simple. So this is really the basis of the feeding and writing system, or the whole memory cell, really. All I really need now is the reading and writing system. So first off, I'm going to do two inversions. I'm going to do them like this. And this way, this will just give me room to work with the writing system. Not the writing system, the reading system when I get to it. But you can, this is still just one complete writing system. I only added two extra inversions. So, full complete writing system. That's another thing I think is pretty cool about that I know a lot of memory systems don't do. You will get the exact same signal you put in as you put out, it won't be inverted. So if I write a 1, then I get a 1 out. I won't get a 0 out. If I write in a 0, it's a 0, I get a 0 out. So it's not inverted. I think that's a really cool thing that a lot of memory systems don't do. So this is the first component of the whole memory cell. This is the writing system. The reading system is a little bit different. So first off, the basis of the reading system is just a torch a way to prevent this torch from be uh, a way to keep this torch off and the way I'm doing this is just with a torch powering this the only issue is now I need a way to power this so what I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to have the readings command underneath this wire and the reason for that is if I had it above the wire then there wouldn't be any possible way for me to have this to be free long or too wide I have to break one of those so I'm just going to drag it under the way I'm going to do this is just have dust here and a repeater. So if I send power to the repeater, that would send power to the dust, which sends power to the torch. Simple enough. Now I'm just going to have a torch here, and that way I'm just going to have a simple way of sending the power up. That's what I'm doing with the torch. And it also allows me to have a signal right here. And this is the complete reading system. The only thing that I forgot is I need glowstone here. And it actually doesn't affect the functionality. The only thing it lets it do is it lets it be tileable up here. So I could put this exact same thing here and it wouldn't affect the functionality. So that's the only reason the glowstone's there. You can have not the glowstone there if you don't plan on tiling it on the z-axis. But if you need to tile it on the z-axis, then you'll need the glowstone there. And really, that should be everything for the whole system only thing is I need this to be powered to de deactivate the um, the reading system so now I should be able to or write and it should not send it out so if I write a 1 it doesn't send it out when I deactivate this it reads it so it does have an inverted reading command but I don't think that's as big of a deal as having all your information inverted when you get it out so yeah that's how you build it this is the complete memory cell, and just to give you a better impression of the full tininess, I guess you could say, of this, I'm just going to clock this. There you go. 
This is the whole thing. It's very tiny f compared to most memory systems I see. It does a lot of things that I think a lot of memory systems don't do. In fact, I don't think they do. A lot of memory systems simply don't do. And I think it's a pretty cool memory cell, all in all. So thank you, hope you enjoyed, and see you next time.